perhaps the most frightening part about the times that we find ourselves in is not knowing what the future holds. But take courage, my brothers and my sisters, for we still know who holds the future, and our lives are still in his hands. Listen. You don't have to worry, and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning, troubles they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe the tears away.
This worship service was produced in compliance with social distancing guidelines recommended by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Stay safe. Learn how to protect yourself, your family, and your community from COVID-19. Go to cdc.gov or call 800-232-4636. Welcome to Hope United Methodist Church in Southfield, Michigan. The Reverend Dr. B. Kevin Smalls, Senior Pastor. We're so glad you're here. Good morning, everyone, and welcome on this Pentecost Sunday, May 31st, 2020, where we come and recognize the move of the Holy Spirit among us. We thank God for your presence. We wanna invite y'all to come on in, make yourselves at home, feel free to shout us out or say hello or good morning, whatever you wish to say. We do read the chats, so we welcome you uh, to be communicative with us. We, we enjoy that and we thank God for you. We thank God for your presence, we thank God for your spirit, and we thank God for your desire to be in worship this morning. While we come, uh, we have many emotions today. Number one, we want to celebrate the ministry of the Reverend Christopher Grimes. This will be his last Sunday with us here at Hope. He has been a phenomenal colleague um, and a wonderful pastor here at Hope United Methodist Church. We wish him well and send God's blessings upon him as he goes forth effective July 1. Uh, to serve his new ministry setting. So please keep Reverend Grimes in your thoughts and in your prayers during this time. Uh, pray for him as he will bring the word of God to us. And of course, we offer all the blessings and all the joy uh, to Reverend Grimes. Feel free to shout out right now in the chat. Uh, we love you, Reverend Grimes. Thank God for you, Reverend Grimes. Or whatever best wish you wish to offer to him at this time. We also come at a time when we have to be honest about the climate that is in our country. You know, Pentecost was a day when the Spirit empowered the disciples to speak to some of everybody about the move of God. It gave them the ability to adjust their language so that they could connect with people and share the good news. It is my prayer that the Spirit will come and equip us to connect with people and share the good news, share the love of Christ, share the message that God has moved into the neighborhood and is making all things new. So we pray. We pray for George Floyd. We pray for Minneapolis. We pray for his family. We continue to pray for Maud Aubrey, and we certainly want to pray for uh, Breonna Taylor and all of those who have been victims of senseless violence and crimes. Let us do all that we can where we are in every conversation, in every demonstration to exhibit the love of Jesus Christ. Let us now pray. Lord, for this time, we give you thanks. We thank you for your spirit which brings us together, your spirit that empowers us, your spirit that resurrects us, your spirit that gives us courage to speak in dangerous places. We pray for a broken world that you would touch and heal and empower. Empower us to love one another, to reach out to one another, to overcome barriers and to knock them down when we encounter them. Oh, Lord, will you bless this act of worship that we offer to you? We love to praise your name, for you have been so good to us, and you are even being good to us as we speak. And so bless the preacher who comes. Thank you for these worship leaders. Thank you for the ministry of music, and thank you for the presence of these who are in the social media realm to experience worship one with another in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, God, we give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, all the adoration to you 
For you are still on the throne, you are still God, and you are still in control. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Friends, let us come now and continue our service of worship and praise.
Good morning, Hope family and friends. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to go before the throne of God today. And I'm going to ask that we not do business as usual. If you are accustomed to just watching us as entertainment, I'm going to ask you not to do that. If you are accustomed to eating during our prayer, don't do that either. No house cleaning, no doing of dishes. But let us just focus on the move of the Holy Spirit. So much is going on in our nation, so much is going on in our homes and our cities. Let us be on one accord. Let us connect our hearts and minds as we seek the Lord in prayer. I'm asking that you will raise your hands to the Lord and that you will focus on him as we pray this prayer. Lord, you are Alpha and you are Omega and you are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory today, Father. We worship you because you are our Lord. We worship you because you are our all in all. You're worthy, Lord. We love you. We give you glory. We give you praise because you are our Alpha and you are our Omega. Lord, as we are experiencing Pentecost Sunday, the day that your Holy Spirit was poured out, Father, we're asking for a resurgence of a time when again you will stir up your spirit within us, that you will give us a double portion for those who have doubt and those who have unbelief. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing, even though we don't understand why trouble is in the land. We don't understand why illness is in the land. We don't understand why there is injustice in the land. So as we think back over this week, we think about the killings, we think about brutality. We think about death of friends and loved ones. We think about illnesses. We think about people who have put their lives on the line for each and every one of us, but yet we don't respect their rights. Father, we have so much, and if we ever needed you, we need you now. So we lift up everyone in each one of those situations that I have mentioned. Father, give us the wisdom to know when to speak and what to speak and when to pray and what to pray. Have mercy upon us, Father. Rain down upon us like sweet dew in the morning so that when we come out of our houses, when we talk to our neighbors, when we talk to our co-workers, when we talk to strangers that we don't know, that we will have an encouraging word for those who don't believe. Father, let us be an example of what it is to serve you in a mighty way. Let us be able to tell people that we still can trust because you said you would never leave us or forsake us. And even though we can't see you, we can still feel your presence. Let your healing spirit move among us. Let your peaceful spirit move among us. We ask that as we agree in the places where we are, that we will always be mindful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in everything that we do. Let us be attentive to your will and your way. Let us move when you say move and be still when you say be still. Oh, we need you now, Father. We need a word from you. We just ask that you will help us when we have those doubtful days and that you will remind us of the things that you've brought us through 
and you will let us know that this is not the end of the ends, but this is a time when you will bring about a revival across the nation and that you will continue to draw people unto you. Again, you are the beginning and you will be the end. And we thank you for that. As we pray for Reverend Grimes, as he will bring the word to us today, Father, we ask for a special anointing upon him. We ask that you will continue to lead him and guide him in his new destination. We pray that you will touch the hearts and the minds of the people who will be receiving the new pastor, that they will love him, that they will encourage him and nurture him. Have your way with him in him and through him and especially today in the word that he is going to bring let it be a word that will be blessing to all those that will hear and let it be something that will draw us into a deeper relationship with you have your way today father have your way and again we will always be mindful to give you the glory to say hallelujah to you and about you And our praise will be with you and for you. And we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture reference today is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But the others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
morning, Hope Church. It is a blessing to be the preacher this morning, and let us go before the throne of grace before this preaching moment. Oh, gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to gather together um, in living rooms and couches, so on, in dining room tables, in bedrooms, God. We give you thanks for the opportunity to gather in the spirit where we have an opportunity to hear afresh from you, God, in this Pentecostal moment where your spirit is still pouring out on us afresh and anew. And so, God, I ask that you move me out of the way so that your Holy Spirit can have her way in this moment of worship where you transform the hearts of your people and you can shift the whole nation just by your spirit. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. I started my preaching career here at Hope with a movie, um, and I thought it'd be really befitting to have one of my last sermons, um, well, my last sermon as a staff person or preacher, pastor at Hope, and it would pertain to movie. Now, it's not the movie that I started with, which was The Color Purple, but another one of my favorites, which is The Cinderella Man. In the movie The Cinderella Man, James Braddock, who is played by Russell Crowe, is a boxer who has been falling uh, hard times during um, poverty that has uh, come and taken over his community that has made it difficult for him to provide for his family. He is a boxer who broke his hand in one of his last fights and he's struggling to keep his family together. He's struggling to you know, bring all the pieces together and he makes a promise to his son to keep them together and his wife makes an executive decision to send the children um, to different family members because the, the hardships that had been falling them were that the heat wasn't on in the middle of winter, the children were starting to get sick, and he was very disappointed um, with his wife's decision. And in those days, um, he just walked out, and he went to the relief office to borrow money so that he could bring his family back together again. I believe that he has every intention on bringing back that which he borrowed. 
The author of our text this morning was uh, a writing to a community that was anticipating something great because Jesus had told them to go to Jerusalem and wait. The author of our text this morning describes the entering of the Holy Spirit as sounding like a violent wind and appearing like tongues of fire. The author does not claim that the Holy Spirit is the wind or is the fire, but rather that the spirit is compared to the sound wind makes into the flames fire produces. The author's intent was to create a vivid impression of the spirit's presence among the community of believers and the Lord's disciples, and the mark of the spirit was to distinguish them from everyone else. The image of tongues of fire brought with it the gift of speaking in foreign languages as the spirit enabled the community, especially the apostles, so that they could testify publicly to Israel about the goodness of God. And what baffled some that were present at Pentecost was that the apostles were not men that should have been able to speak their native language. See, when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit also gives extraordinary insight to those that she feels. The Holy Spirit is not the private property of an enlightened few, nor the transitory presence. The Spirit comes to meet the people of God and to remind them that they belong to the promise keeper. Luke makes it clear in his conversation as he writes to this community that his petition to those who read and were there was that they had all come together. The whole house was filled with people praising God, worshiping God, praying, singing psalms, and giving their all to God as they wait with great anticipation for the Spirit. And when the Spirit came to rest on them, each of them and all of them were filled. The, then there was a crowd of devout Jews who were a, a little ways off hearing the noise that had come and taken over that particular house. And they heard this sound. And the source of the sound were some Galileans who were notorious for their lack of an ability to use linguistic talent to speak in multiple languages and tongues. But the Holy Spirit had come and given them the power and the ability to not only speak in a language that they could understand, but they were also testifying to God's deeds of power. See, it is right here that we need to acknowledge that there will always be some people in our lives that don't think that we're qualified or good enough for the gifts that God has given us. And I'm glad that God is allowing me to be with you this morning to remind you to keep your heads up and to not allow yourself to be captured by the conversations of those who will say you're not good enough, nor are you equipped, nor are you qualified to do what it is that God has equipped you to do. See, we can't afford to get distracted by what people say about or to us. We have to grab hold of the promises of God. I imagine that I'm not the only one who at times who has felt lonely or felt alone as if I was all by myself. And there are times when the spirit of the living God will whisper not just into my ears, but into the ears of those who will listen. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I believe that there are times when we feel as if we're just existing, that we're not living into the fullness of the promises of God, that we're not able to capture all that God has for us, and we don't feel like we're, we're really alive. We're just kind of like the walking dead, moving along, doing the things that we've always done. We're just in the routine of life, and I can hear the spirit of the living God saying to the church, I came that you might, might have life and have it abundantly. There are times when I know I'm not the only one that feels down and weak and I can hear the spirit of God saying, do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
Sometimes we feel as if we've been abandoned by family members. Some of us know what it is to be abandoned by parents, but I can also hear the spirit of the living God saying, if your mother and your father forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. We often may be embodying some fear and some anger in this season of the world where we're living, where racism has grabbed hold of us and it is trying to rob us of our peace. But I can also hear the Lord saying, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. And I cannot count the number of hours and minutes that I have spent myself, and I imagine you as well, have spent upset with the lynching of George Floyd. And we probably have cried tears as women have grabbed hold of their sons and grown men uh, with great frustration are trying to figure out how to make sense of things that are happening around us. We would think that we are almost on the other side of the evil that is easily trying to pull us into a place where God can't meet us. But the reality is we serve a God who is a promise keeper who meets us in the darkest places. And I can hear the spirit of the living God saying, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I hear the spirit reminding the church, reminding the people of God that God is a promise keeper. What the Lord has spoken over us will come to pass. God's word never returns to God void. We can't afford to allow the lies of the enemy to become our truth. God has something to say about us from the onset of creation. The psalmist declares in Psalms 30, 139 and 14, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. When God speaks, all the madness has got to stop. When God speaks, all other voices speaking against us will become silent. When God speaks, the same folks that said you weren't qualified, the same folks that get bewildered thinking that you're not good enough to be who it is, God is saying you are, will be silent as God has a way of promoting us into the place and positions that God would have us to be. This is because our God is a promise keeper. When God speaks a promise, it will be kept. When God speaks, we can trust that God's word is true. The word of God says God is not a man that God would have to or should have to lie. God does not have to, nor does God offer us fluff to get us or coerce us to be who it is God has called us to be. There will always be some folks who are going to hate. See, the haters are going to hate. They're not going to be excited about you when you get your promotion in God. See, some people are excited about getting things, and the church is excited about getting more of God. But what I really love about God is that God doesn't allow us only to hear the chatter of those who hate on us. God has a way of surrounding us with some folks who still get excited about what God is doing around us. And some folks still are amazed at how God could take people just like us and move us into places where we can serve God in high places. God is not done with us yet. Some people don't want to hear your story, but there is always someone that needs to hear your story. See, your story is a testimony and a reminder that God is a promise keeper. See, I I get really excited when I think and hear about the stories that I've heard people give me about their rough times. And see, some people are not excited about having people come and tell them about their current location as if that is the final stop. I don't see it as complaining. I see it as them sharing with me that I haven't quite gotten over the hill yet. But if 
you just hang on just a little while. I'm, I'm sure that the God that we serve not only is a promise keeper, but he's a way maker. He, the God who can get you over through and around all situations and circumstances of life. I'm here to tell you this morning that we should still be getting excited about our struggles because the same God that walked us into the struggle will walk us right up out of it in due season. God has never lost. A fight. Your struggles are a reminder to those who are struggling that victory is something to be hoped for. Our stories are not complete until God says it is over. When Peter started quoting Joel in the last days, It will be God. God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see dreams, and your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. Even upon my slaves, both male and female, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Peter does something very unique as Luke listed in Acts 2. Peter said, listen. What Peter was really saying when he said, listen, he was saying, let me place the word of God in your ears. See, in our context... Almost nobody really drinks at 9 a.m. But in Peter's context, he had to make a point in the spirit and defend the community's Pentecostal experience against the charges that were being brought up against them to disqualify them, saying that they must be drunk. They must be filled with wine. But Peter is like, no. We are drunk in the spirit. Some folks are going to think you crazy because you love your God. Some folks going to think you have lost your mind because you can't get enough of talking about how good God has been to you. My brothers and sisters, do not be discouraged about your own testimony because folks won't be excited about what you went through because some folks weren't with you when you went through it. And see, eventually, at some point, you got to make up your mind that you're going to serve God no matter what the cost, that you will be faithful to the one who who brought you out of harm's way, the one who prepared a table for you in the midst of your enemies. This same God has a way of sitting you around the table with those who can't stand you, can't stand to see you, and watch, make them watch you grow and flourish and be who it is that God has called you to be. And the only thing you got to do is remember to say, it wasn't me. It was God. In the culture that Peter is defending this nine in the morning kind of experience. They're trying to kind of put it out there that they got to be drunk. People will always find an excuse or a reason for you to be crazy when they don't understand what it is you're doing and why you're doing it. Faith is not about what anybody else sees. It's not even about what we see. It's really all about what we believe and who we believe in. Peter says in the last days as he was preaching about what he was preaching about wasn't the end of the world, but the last days of God's salvation history when things said and done by Jesus's successors would take on an added urgency. Now is the time to proclaim the good news of God's marvelous work and how God has brought us into God's family. Most times we think that the end of times or the end of the world is about an imminent apocalypse. But in this case, in Acts, it's about the mission of God's kingdom being restored to Israel. God's outpour of God's spirit signals that a promise was being kept. God declares, I will be their God and they, my people, 
Pentecost signaled that God, through God's spirit, has set the stage to fulfill the promise God had made long ago, to tabernacle with us, to live with us, to dwell among us, to be the counselor, the one that we should come to first. Many of us go to mama, daddy, big mama, Medea, pop, pop, and everybody else, brothers, sisters, before we go to God. We oftentimes go talk to somebody else before we ever consult God. And God is saying, I set it up so that you wouldn't have to go to them first. To be able to go to God and to know that you can ask for anything in his son's name and he will be listening. Peter explains what the house of Israel was experiencing was what was prophesied by Joel, an outpouring of the spirit that had ushered in the last days of salvation's history when everyone, not just some, but everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And when Luke wrote this account, he used the word everyone to make it very contextual that he was including both repentant Gentiles and Jews. Every person who calls on the name of the Lord and confesses him as God's anointed one, as God's beloved son, would receive forgiveness. My brothers and sisters, I am here this morning to encourage you and to remind you that in the midst of the evil that's going on around us, in the midst of the pandemic that we're still trying to fight our way through, that God is a promise keeper. And that the promise is not predicated on stuff, but on God's presence. The promise that God gives us is that God will be with us. And what the Lord speaks, God will do. The early church is a reminder to us living today that our God is faithful. God kept God's word then, and I am a believer that God is still keeping God's word now. Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem, and they did. Their faith in Christ opened the doors of their heart to receive and be filled by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is still filling us up right now, refreshing us, renewing us, equipping us, strengthening us, and reminding us that we're not in it by ourselves. We raise a question in the black community, when will black lives matter? Black lives will always matter in the eyes of God. It is up to us to get into conversation and agreement with God about how we go about shifting the culture so that we can prove and be witnesses to the power and the awesome work of our God. Our God is a promise keeper. His word never returns to him void. And I believe the best part of all the promises that God offers us is that God would never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Our God is a promise keeper. God has never spoken anything over you that hasn't come to pass or won't. And I didn't end the sermon abruptly, but I wanted to have an opportunity to kind of put this nugget in your ear at the end. Yeah, Braddock made it back to the relief center where he had borrowed money and he paid back every cent that he had borrowed. The thing that makes God so wonderful is that whatever the Lord says he will do, he's going to do. And so my brothers and sisters, you don't have to walk 
in this season alone, you can be brought into the family of God by simply confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord. Now, what are you really saying when you say Jesus is Lord? You're really saying that you're the one who really owns me. I'm going to surrender control. I'm going to stop trying to figure it out by myself, that I'm going to put my trust in someone other than myself. And if you're a bit of a person that's kind of a control freak, it's kind of hard to surrender who you are. But I'm telling you, it'll be the greatest decision you ever make is surrendering your life, your everything to God. Withhold nothing. You make that one choice and I'm telling you, your whole life is going to be different. If you don't have a church home, I can assure you that we at Hope Church would love to walk with you. You can email me personally at cmgrimes at hopeumc.org and we will get you connected with some folk here who want to surround you, who want to love on you, who want to show you the promises of God, who want to show you that you can be loved just how you are and then we'll leave the rest up to God to transform your life and to shift you into a position where you can testify to the goodness of God. Somebody indeed needs to hear your story. I would love to hear your story. So would you come and give your life to the one who will change it forever? Pentecost is about celebrating the promise God made so long ago and was fulfilling and keeping about being with God's people always and forever. Today is your day. You can make that choice to turn it around and give yourself to the Lord. I believe that's what you're doing right now. You're probably confessing Jesus as Lord. And guess what? You are making a phenomenal decision to change your life for the better. Don't let what's going on in the world keep you from coming to Christ, who will equip you to handle the things that are going on around us today. Racism may look as if it's having its way, but death never has the last word. Christ is Lord and he is risen and he is sending the comforter to you right now so that you can be a part of God's family and so that you can be equipped to live in a world where God and Jesus Christ is king. Amen. Church, it is offering time in the house of the Lord this morning, and we are so excited that we get to participate in giving to God just a portion of that which God has given to us. There is going to be information that's going to be uh, flowing across the screen so that you can participate in worship in this way. It is indeed a gift to be able to be a cheerful giver, not someone giving reluctantly, but with great enthusiasm, because in your gift, you keep this space alive for a whole generation of people to come and meet the Lord here at Hope Church. Would you give, would you love God, and would you do it with great excitement? Let us pray. Oh, God, we thank you for these gifts of tithes and offering, God. We are so grateful that you have put us in positions to give um, finances, our time, our talent. Um, God, we're so grateful that, you've, that you have shifted things to uh, allow us to participate in worship in this way. And so, God, we ask that you take these gifts of tithes and offering and use them for your kingdom building so that generations of people who will come after us will have an opportunity to experience your love, your grace, your mercy, your strength, your power, your kindness, and your patience here in your church. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Hope it has indeed been a pleasure to serve here with you, to walk alongside you. Um, our God is a promise keeper. And what I can say is that I'm not God, but I will make a promise that this is not goodbye, but see you later. And I'll see you later because I'm really just up the road. I'm not moving overseas or anything like that. You won't see me every Sunday, but you just wait. You might see me sneaking in sooner than you think. And so let us go down from this place and worship God, not just in word, but in our deeds. Let us move with a kind of social holiness where we can put somebody else ahead of ourselves. We're not only concerned about our own salvation and our own relationship with God. Let us care about somebody else's relationship with the Lord. And so as we leave this place and never the presence of God, may the peace, the love, the joy, the hope, the strength, the courage, and the wisdom of our Lord and Savior flood your life this Pentecostal Sunday where you can be transformed in such a way that you walk in the kind of boldness to give witness to the power of God and do it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Love you and see you soon. Hello, I'm Susan Gordon Jackson, and on behalf of SPRC, the Staff Parish Relation Committee, and the Hope United Methodist Church family, we want to let you know that May 31st, 1970, was a very significant day. That was the day our pastor, Reverend B. Kevin Smalls, was born. So here at Hope, we just want to celebrate him and make sure he has a happy birthday. We have a social distancing card shower and the members and staff of HOPE have shepherded all these cards together for HOPE members and friends. And um, we want you to just celebrate your birthday and just have an awesome time because we are so thankful and grateful for how you have brought us up the hill, over the mountain, through the valley, and even through a pandemic. You know, you always have a plan, you implement the plan, you know where to get the plan, and you know where to take us. So we just wanna say happy 50th birthday, and may the next half century of your life be as remarkable as the first. Happy birthday, Reverend Smalls. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am really speechless. And next Sunday, I'm sure I'll have more to say. But thank you so much. Um, I didn't see this coming. And I am deeply moved by that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Amen. Just to let it
Worship and ministry of Hope United Methodist Church is only made possible by the support from our followers. Whether you give by text at 248-965-5534 or online at hopeumc.org slash giving or by mail at 26275 Northwestern Highway, Southfield, Michigan, 48076. And every gift is devoted to the work of God. Stay in touch with Hope by texting CONTACT to 248-368-0204 and we'll add you to our email and our text phone list. Now, for those of you who have been enjoying this worship service on YouTube, we'd like to ask you to do us a favor. 
on the bottom right of your screen is a thumbs up symbol. Please click on that icon as a symbol of your support for our streaming worship services. Now on the bottom right of your screen is a subscribe icon. Please click on that as a symbol of your support also for Hope's streaming worship services. That way, you will be sent notifications of future recordings. God bless, and thanks for joining us.